Okay, uh, hi everyone. Uh, I'm not sure how long this video is going to be, but uh, I just wanted to actually just bring the, your attention to something that I come across. Uh, I'm not actually, I haven't really finished reading this book, but uh, perhaps for those who are interested, you might want to just consider reading this book. Okay, this book is uh, Dark Persuasion, um, a history of brainwashing. Yeah, history of brainwashing from path love to social media. Uh, I came across this in the library okay, yesterday while looking for books on travel and I was in the psychology section which was just a few you know, tables away or shelves away from that section on travel so I thought this book, wow, it looks very interesting and uh, it's by Joel E. Dimsdale okay, Dimsdale uh, who's actually a distinguished professor emeritus that means he's retired uh, in the Department of Psychiatry at the University of California, San Diego. So uh, this comes from someone who is actually a trained psychiatrist. Okay, uh, there are many other books in the field of like things like, uh, you know, dark psych this is about dark psychology, dark persuasion, yeah. Um, there's dark psychology, obviously, things such as, uh, let's say about, you know, psychopaths. Um, what was that? There are so many books, I can't remember. There's this, uh, Ken Kill, Ken Kill, who was writing about uh, you know his time in UBC studying under Robert Hare and uh, or even things like by Robert Hare himself who's the you know the world's premier expert or foremost expert on psycho psychopathy uh, but this is a very interesting book because this doesn't really ex exactly just talk about psychopaths okay uh, we associate uh, let's say you know psychopaths with brainwashing the fact that they can brainwash us but uh, but I don't think it's just psychopaths because according to this book this is actually um, from a historical point of view but it starts from the how brainwashing okay brainwash is basically from the Chinese word which uh, the Chinese word means si now si means wash now brain so uh, obviously you can't take out the brain and wash it but but it actually refers to indoctrination okay when you put you plant ideas into people's heads uh, I think for us those who lived in a in the era of the you know the Cold War, uh, not my generation but my grandparents' generation and uh, yeah my grandparents' generation, those who you know they they I mean they escaped communist China or they left communist China, uh, not even communist China before before com before before the communist China that was like during the Second World War. Be prior to that actually, actually yeah, they they left then they uh, they came to other places they went to other places including Singapore Thailand. Uh, Vietnam, Canada, or elsewhere, yeah, or United States, okay, so, um, there's this whole thing about brainwashing, brainwashing has a very early roots, but, um, I have just looked through this book, I haven't looked through all of it, so, the part about the, there's some part about you, the, the Russian, the Soviets, yeah, during the early part, uh, in the 1920s, yeah, um, yeah, being, was it, doing, oh yeah, Stalin, this reference to Stalin, Okay, uh, but I haven't read this part. I read the part about um, how you know Stockholm syndrome, how it's being. Uh, yeah, this this is the second. I started from the second part about the uh, use of not use, but how Stockholm syndrome is being formed, and how you know criminals actually. Uh, I mean, it's not really intended, but somehow it just emerges. Okay, and uh, one thing about Stockholm syndrome with different variants is that. Um, the victims normally end up. We know that with the case of, I mean, people who are uh, basically victims of abuse and uh, narcissistic manipulation, or even just manipulation by someone who is actually uh, very high on the skill of, let's say, psychopathy or any antisocial traits. Okay, or even not just antisocial traits, it could be just a cluster B personality disorder. Okay, anyone in that particular group uh, who is able to actually manipulate other people. Okay, uh, they are, they are very adept, but the one thing is that they are able to do so also because of this element of uh, behavior in all of us as victims. Uh, it's called Stockholm Syndrome. And it's, um, the, the story, I mean, I'm still reading it, so I'm just, I just finished one, one article, chapter or chapter, and it was quite interesting because uh, according to what um, this uh, Dimsdale actually said, Joel Dimsdale, he said that uh, it's not just uh, kidnappers or criminals who actually thrive on this kind of dark persuasion but in fact he says that clerics meaning that religious figures okay like pastors uh, cult leaders or even uh, any kind of move, any religious movement so uh, that that doesn't just apply to you know uh, Christian traditions but even 
other non-Christian traditions too. Uh, I'm not going to name any particular one, but it does seem that in, in fact, uh, such feelings of manipulation, dark persuasion can, or indoctrination can exist there. Okay, uh, but very interesting thing that about this, uh, par this particular paragraph, not paragraph, but this, uh, this article, okay, this article or this chapter that I read, and it, it seems to say a lot about how, let's say, this, um, this dark psychology works, especially in the case of the um, criminals, okay, criminal behavior, because um, in this particular chapter, uh, flash conversion of hostages, Stockholm syndrome, and its variants, okay, um, it actually started with this story or this anecdote, okay, of the Credit Bank and Bank in Stockholm. Yeah, basically that was in the 1970s, 19, oh, August 23rd, 1973, uh, in which this uh, Jan, J-A-N, Jan Eric Olsen, okay, O-L-S-S-O-N, okay, he entered this um, bank, okay, in Stockholm, wearing disguise and makeup, but all of a sudden he just boom, took out the gun and just shot in the, the ceiling. And then um, he wanted to basically seize the hostages, um, get his friend Clark Olofsson, Olofsson, O, O L O F, S S O N, okay, released from prison. So there's a lot of this whole uh, series of what happened, but uh, basically they, it was a really uh, long six day standoff, and the six day standoff uh, led to certain situations where, let's say, uh, the, the the hostages were basically on lease lease basically on a leash meaning that they will they they cannot go without him releasing even to the toilet or whatever or the restroom they couldn't go without him or, or his friend who was subsequently released under put under the police agreeing with that to actually uh unless they release that thing the lease the leash they can't really even go to the toilet but occasionally they did that okay and and the strange thing is that at the end of that altercation where the police eventually came out with the uh, you know, tear gas, they directed tear gas into that place uh, and they saved uh, the, the, the so-called hostages. Uh, a lot of these strange things happened where the hostages actually blamed the police. Uh, yeah, they, they showed kind of hostility, hostility towards the rescuers, but they, they, they were also, however, uh, let's just say, very very sympathetic okay to the to the yeah to, to the i would say robbers yeah the robbers or the kidnappers okay and and the strange thing is this okay how did this happen uh based on what dim still actually noted uh there were some particular moments okay uh the I, I think that the main thing is this under there are a few possible possible explanations according to Dimsley, okay, or at least a few accounts of what he, he according to what he said. Uh, one of them was this case where let's say you know the the prison was the host not prisoner but the hostage Christian Unmark, okay, uh, Unmark or Unmark, okay, is E H N M A R K, okay. He, she commented that uh, Olsen was kind because he let her go to the bathroom of Leash. So what does this imply? It implies that there's a very, very rare occasional moment of kindness. Okay, uh, We know that this is one thing with uh, some things like you know, narcissistic people or toxic and manipulative people. They cannot be 100% manipulative and toxic because if they're always angry, always like that, uh, I think all of us, we, we rec I mean, we are very sensitive people as uh, empathetic people and not neurotypical people. We will just be running away straight. But uh, these occasional moments of kindness actually tend to, uh, it, it, can, it can only be just like 1% to 2% of the whole 100% of the time that you have with them. But it's enough to actually tilt that whole sense of your emotions towards them, okay? And then there was another one that was just weird. There was a case of where Jan Olsen uh, towards Christine, okay, Chris, the same, yeah, the Christine Unmark, the same, same lady. Uh, he kept on actually caressing her. Yeah, he, he was very sexual. He caressed her sexually, assuring her that he had not slept with a woman for two years. And then um, what he did was to, you know, claim that, uh, what did she say? 
Oh yeah, she refused to have any form of intercourse with him during those, those six days. But what he did was to, you know, he turned away from her, lying next to her. He, not just say that he, yeah, he masturbated, according to what he, uh, Dylan still said, masturbated on the car- carpet of the bank vault. It's like, huh? Uh, but 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 I mean I'm I'm not surprised because you know that I can't remember that I was like I remember that sometimes you know based on my experience with grooming uh, as someone who who have been through that experience with that uh, that creepy uh, photographer that you know the thing is this they they might not have sex with you which is what they did but they will touch you and then after that they'll go in the corner of their room and then they'll do or somewhere else a space to do something with themselves and then. You might be there to, to see, but you're not participating in it. You're not participating in it visually, but I'm not visually. You are. You saw it, but you're like, uh, I'm not doing it because I'm not like I'm not like you. Okay, like, why why am I doing it? Like, but but they are they they. You get what I mean? The whole thing is that the claim that they are not forcing themselves on you. Okay, uh, they're not telling you to do anything to them, but they do it to to the image or to the thought of you okay and you are aware of it you, you get how sick it is but this is what Yan Olsen was doing and and it seems that it's a so-called occasional kindness which is not really kindness but it's just a uh, manipulation but it, it, it emerges and based on that I kind of really realized oh you know a lot of these people will is somehow it's not scripted it's not always scripted but we do end up developing those kind of feelings of affection or sympathy for them and then you know that in case of the not just this Stockholm bank bank heist but even there are many other cases let's say there's this uh the the Chechen rebels in two yeah the Chechen not rebels terrorists in 2002 who held more than 800 hostages in the Moscow theater and what else and then um a group and also in uh, 1975, yeah, a group from the South Moluccan Youth Movement who seized a Dutch train and held hostages for 12 days. And then, um, when I was 1976, that's my birth year. <laughs> now you know how old I am. Uh, five Croatian terrorists who hijacked a TWA flight scheduled to fly from New York to Chicago. And you know, in the, in the flight was supposed to be, you know, go directly to Chicago, but they keep on flying here and there, um, they had some kind of a negotiation which end up uh, being rerouting the plane because also because of the, the threats that they had planted bombs in the Central Station in New York. And and there was this whole thing about uh, the plane moving from, let's say, uh, New York to, where was New York? To, let's say, Gander, Newfound- Newfoundland in Canada. Okay, that's the Mar- Maritimes. Then to Kafavik, Iceland. Okay, that's on the other side of the Atlantic. And then after Kafavik Iceland to Paris where they finally surrender. So you see, you see that how the whole all this with all these things is I mean it's in this case it is linked to like public vi- uh, displays of violence and terrorism. And and in all these cases, even the hostages, okay, they, they develop some form of uh what we say sympathy or affection or the kind of positive perception. Why, in fact, they think that uh, the the agents of justice were in fact hindering them from attaining to the kind of safety that they want or peace that they wanted as the hostages, which uh, and they were trying. Some of them even went to fight on the behalf, a lobby for the <laughs> for the release of all these uh, kidnappers. Okay, and. Of course, this is just uh, you know on the political level, but 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 there's also or the social level, but there's also like individual cases like you know the famous case in the USA is like 1991, uh, 11 year old J C Lee Duga who was being kidnapped by Fleet Garrido, okay, and then who you know um, how should I say I mean it's to try to make it something that won't be panned or blocked off, uh yeah he 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 essay her okay basically he he um basically took advantage. He didn't just take advantage of her. Basically, he he R A P E her. Okay, um, and then uh, multiple times. In fact, and the strange thing was that when the police came in and like even the parole agent, um, it was kind of strange because uh, J C Liu the guy actually developed some form of Stockholm syndrome and kept on denying that uh, 
to the at least to the parole agent that she was uh being kidnapped. In fact, she claimed that she she was his daughter, uh, some other girl called Elisa from Minnesota when she was in uh, Minas- uh in California, in uh, somewhere near the Los Angeles area, and. The, the, the strange thing was this uh, what she claimed later on years after that was like why did I do that she said that um, okay this is a very exact thing she said uh, which also explains a little bit of what uh, you know like, I think that it also accounts for what we like people of our, uh, like us who have been through some form of abuse or emotional or um, domestic or you know domestic could be uh, even in a relationship romantic relationship or professional or friendship even friendships okay or religious faith okay the thing is this she said this okay uh what did she say she actually denied that she has stockholm syndrome and instead she said uh well really it's degrading you know having my family believe that i was in love with this captor and wanted to stay with him i mean that is so far from the truth that it makes me want to throw up i adapted okay this is what she says i adapted to survive my circumstances there is just no other way to put it. Okay, this is what I think that uh, Pete Walker from uh, Surviving to Thriving okay, uh, calls Learn Helplessness okay, in, complex CPS, in the book Complex PTSD. Okay. Uh, basically, you know, the thing is that when we have uh, extended periods of time that we go through such uh, forms of uh, abuse, manipulation and everything, um, we, we, we tend the, the, the kind of neurology or the way we our, our bodies and minds actually uh, develop is that uh, we actually adapt we start learning the helplessness okay we start thinking that there's no way okay there's no way out so we have to just do it this way okay and this is why it differs a lot from the outside world when you, when you know when the world outside world looks in they don't think that there's no way out you know they think that there's definitely a way out they're like why don't you just leave you can just run, you know, but 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 I think it's not always the case. Like, you know, for example, Elizabeth Smart, who has a similar case with like uh, 14, yeah, she was kidnapped at 14 years old in uh, 2002. Okay, she kept on even like, you know, she was going around the country together with the kidnapper, he, he and his wife. And just like uh, Miss Duga, okay, JC Lee Duga, she kept on denying it. And, and the point when she was, I think there was one, uh, I saw that story, a documentary about it, or at least there was a, a narrative uh, re-enact- reenactment of the whole thing on, on the film. And uh, even in the library, you know, when asked about it, she kept on like, denying. She said, oh, I'm, I'm not, I'm not another person. I'm not Elizabeth Smart that you think I am. Okay. I'm not, I'm not her. And in fact, she claimed to be the daughter of a kidnapper, her adopters. Okay. Uh, a doctor so okay I was like whoa but 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 you know this is like it seems very very much like we could just blame people who have done that uh, who have been through that saying why don't you just leave but <coughs> I mean from a personal perspective I think it's impossible to do that we, we, we shouldn't be thinking that way because a lot of it is learn helplessness and so reading this actually gives me a lot of insight and and the strange thing was that when I as I read this, I was like thinking, wow, was it similar to, you know, in a way to what I was thinking? Because my, my friend asked me once, like, why don't you just, you know, leave all these abusers and groomers who are like, they were taking advantage of you and everything. But uh, I'm sure that you probably could. I mean, it's not as if you don't know any self-defense or whatever, but uh, of, of course, they themselves also know some form of violence and, and they could probably use it against me. But you know what Elizabeth Smart went through was that her kidnappers threatened to hurt her family. That's why she actually kept quiet about it and, and, and tried to deny that that kind of abuse. And then I was like, wow, but wasn't the the groomer also doing the same thing to me? Like those groomers and narcissists and whatever, they threatened to do, thing, do things to me and uh, the things I, I shan't mention them here on, on the phone or on, on YouTube or whatever. <coughs> they could just get this video pen or whatever for the wrong reasons and uh, some of the stuff are very unsavory, okay? Uh, and and let's just say that now that I put it behind me, you know, in my years when I wasn't so aware of all these things and, and uh, I kind of realized that a lot of this is really springs from learned helplessness. But uh, just like what Dim still has said, you know, in, in most cases, like all this, uh, we don't know what exactly is the meme, what, what, what actually, how does this thing come about? It's not like really intentional on the part of the captor or the one holding us hostage, but 
it just emerges and supposedly according to the FBI this consultant yeah what's his name psychiatrist Frank Ogberg uh, O-C-H-B-E-R-G okay um he actually said that uh, it's a very what he call he calls it an unholy alliance between terrorists and captive involving fear distrust or anger towards authorities on the outside so you see what is getting at there's some form of alienation we start developing a complex a kind of psychological complex that leads us to alienate people who want to help us so um i kind of think wow so that this what also the narcissist is whoever they are that they are taking advantage of they make us develop some form of distrust towards people who actually meant the best for us i kind of realized it you know like i i was like thinking because uh this is something not related to the book i was thinking that uh you know just just by extrapolating it you know that those of us who are aware of this uh, american television drama series what's the name the legend of the seeker there's this uh, it's, it's a very as a, like uh, almost pseudo medievalist uh, it's a medievalist fantasy kind of uh, thing uh, in this alternative world uh, and uh, about this you know richard rao or richard rao or richard cypher okay who later learns out learns that he is actually uh, of the Rao line of wizards, okay, uh, and then his so-called half brother or brother Duncan Rao is actually uh, the evil wizard. Is like se- sending up people to hunt him down and to get the sword of truth. And then he there's a you know mother there's a character called the mother confessor, okay. Or I mean she she comes from a long line of women, okay. The uh, the confessors, okay. Uh, I know that confessors in the Christian uh, world means martyrs okay you, you become a confessor or a mother for your faith because people torture you or whatever but in terry good kinds novels and even in the television series confessors are not like that confessors being women okay they come from a long line of magic they were created by the earliest line of wizards okay and um the first if you watch the if you read the the story the the what's the what's the one uh yeah confessor it's about the first confessor okay she was someone who didn't know any magic but her husband was killed okay so she was a widow and then uh her husband's uh, friend or something like that who's also a wizard okay uh decide she decides to protect her you know everything but in the end he realizes oh she has potential to become a confessor we can we can groom her to you know become a woman of magic to use her gift to give her a gift which is to extract or confess the truth out of other people so you know com- female confessors have this particular magic um the the normal confessors those on the lower levels they do this by grabbing the man's neck okay touching the neck and then once they touch the eyes you know this god there's there are two kinds of magic i do i won't deal uh with the you know the exact kinds but the eyes of the confessor will start changing becomes black the one who, the man or the woman whom he or she 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 touches the neck off the eyes will also become black okay for a time being after that before returning to a normal color and then at that point in time they will say command me mistress you see this is really mine or confess me mistress confess me confessor that means my wish is come your command I was thinking wow this is mind control this is literally like what uh, narcissists and whatever do to you except in the case of you know the confessors and even like in the novel and in the tv series the legend of seeker uh, they use it for good okay so because they use it for good uh, that's supposed to be good i mean something and then they they, they don't use it on the wrong people uh, because she can't like you know the character of the mother confessor she what's her name kaylen yeah Clearly, I'm no. She can't use it on the one she loves, who's sub Richard Cypher, because if she uses it on him, he'll be in perfect constant bondage to her, and then he'll lose his free will. He can no longer wield the sword of truth, okay? Uh, because the sword of truth requires someone with a, a will of his own, okay, to to will, and then of course, uh, yeah, that's one thing. And and but of course, you know that the highest level. Talking about the highest level of uh, conf- confession, confession. Uh, which is to extract your truth. This was similar to what priests do to extract truth, but that one is voluntary. This is not voluntary. This is involuntary because the highest level of confession in that world of legend or seeker uh, is when the 
woman, the mother confessor, okay, only only the mother confessor has that highest level. It, it's called the kan, kanda. See what it's called. C O N, okay, one word. D A R kanda. Kanda at that point is crazy. She goes into some kind of blood. It's called the blood rage, literally blood rage. The whole thing, the eyes turn black. It's the same thing, but instead of being weakening, weakened, okay, after she the whole thing happens. Her kanda actually is like a permanent Viking. It's almost like a Viking blood rage. Uh, she can, you know, she can just extend her arm out there, and then this kanda it doesn't need she doesn't need to touch anyone. So anything within the the distance becomes compelled by her, and they have to follow her. So I was like, this is like mass hypnosis. So I mean, this is a very interesting series because it just reminds me, you know, this is like mass hypnosis, but isn't it what? Isn't it what we see in all those like you know like we have we see in mega churches, uh, cult groups, okay not not just cult groups but mega churches yeah charismatic mega churches Pentecostal groups, uh, fringe groups which tell you certain things like, uh, speak the thing into existence like the word the word faith movement, the prosperity gospel health and wealth gospel or they say that you can serve yourself uh, communion I think we come. Uh, so so I was thinking, wow, you mean you can just tell yourself that and then this becomes blood and <laughs> blood and uh, flesh of Christ by your own will. So, oh, are you a, some? No, 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 no. That's pretty scary. And that, that, that is like, but, but you see that, you, you see what I'm getting at? It's like, it's not just uh, narcissists, but it's also all these different bunch of people. Uh, even, even scam, okay, scammers do that. Like motivational speakers do that a lot. Uh, but these are not the only ones. There are so many, many of this. And the more they do that, um, you know, it's actually something that keeps on... The more they practice that, the more they get to where they want to get to. And I think none of us are really... Until we are really aware of these kind of things, that dark persuasion, that it actually exists, okay? Until we stop bypassing that fact, we are going to like really learn that. We're going gonna, gonna to continue being vulnerable or susceptible to all this, okay? So uh, anyway... Um, I'm going to actually continue reading this book. This is a very good book. Very interesting, okay? Because it comes from an academic in the field of psychiatry and uh, very relevant to what I'm actually planning to do some uh, research on about, uh, yeah, the the current mega churches of the culture of manipulation and narcissistic abuse and spiritual abuse that's going on. And uh, of course, it's not the only one. I mean, but it's just that, you know, for some reason, you know, all these charismatic mega churches tend to exercise a lot more of that and I, as, as I was saying you know I have had a friend okay whom I don't really talk to who cut me off because she has a sexual attraction to her pastor uh, okay uh, you know whatever you know I mean until she grows up and realizes that she's being manipulated uh, but you realize that it's not even just here and and we have things like you know in Korea you have the Jesus Morning Star JMS cow group where the pastor actually recruits he gets his members okay and his male and female members recruit other female members who are actually his sex slave no, I mean literally sex slave because they claim, they claim that they are recruiting people for some entertainment company so it's like oh um, it's like a K-pop or Korean pop company or celebrity com uh, management but it's not they end up becoming manipulated into having sex with him okay so they become part of his harem his narcissistic harem it's very sick and disturbing but it's not like the only one and i kind of told my friends you know what this is like just the tip of the iceberg of what's going on below the surface of uh, civilized korean society south korean society because i've seen it i mean i i've been there i mean i lived there before i i i, I haven't worked there but i studied there and uh, i I've, I've gone there quite a lot of times visited i mean the surface is very clean but once you you just tap you know below the surface you know, things get very dichotomized very quickly and uh, it's not so much like Singapore where let's say things are sometimes mixed in and you still don't see it because of the you know the Western culture the way it actually, the Western culture that it comes in where everything just you know uh, becomes very unclear okay but uh, yeah it happens and so you know what I'll, I'll just say that uh, you know one, one thing is always we need to be aware of all this all this kind of dark control dark, uh, dark psychology and mind control and um, yeah. Anyway, uh, I'll give a more of a more. Uh, what say? 
a fuller explanation of, uh, or even summary of this book once I read uh, more about this. Uh, the other chapters, I think, uh, especially one of it is about the Heaven's Gate cult and uh, yeah, many other things. is very interesting, but I think it'll take some time for me to finish reading. Um, that will be the... <gasps> wow, 90 pages. <laughs> 90 pages that takes... Uh, this takes about maybe a week or more to read, uh, considering that I have work and everything. Um, then, of course, there's some parts about the Korean War as well and uh, Cold War. Anyway, uh, that's it. And then I'll just make a move first and uh, have a good one, everyone. Okay, bye-bye.